Actually, today is a very important day because our friend Dr. Vandana Shiva has uh, made a very important announcement in one of the environmental gatherings which just took place in, uh, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where she completely supports and tells the message to all the uh, environmentalists around the world that we can't really talk about environmentalism as long as we give any kind of support to the industry of killing animals. That industry is one of the symptoms, the worst symptoms of our planet. If you could say it's one of the major causes that man loses sensitivity for his brother animals. He loses sensitivity and once you get accustomed to kill, I tell you, you end up killing anybody. It starts with being insensitive towards the living beings when God has provided us with such an incredible, incredible opulence in the form of Malinis and uh, we saw lots of Malinis today um, and, and other wonderful fruits and vegetables and everything we can do for surviving, keeping our body and soul together because last but least we want to keep our body and our soul together because otherwise how can we do our service? So, and we have a lot of service. We have a service to do for our children. We have a service to do for our, for our planet Earth, for our Mother Earth, for our rivers, mountains, everything. It's so wonderful that we can come together here because we also have a feeling that we should do something of raising the consciousness in Europe for all the people to come to their senses and to uh, join in the sweet effort. Because last but not least, we are talking about the sweet effort of love. That's all. We don't want to involve, we don't want to disturb anybody. Anybody wants to live any way they want, they can do so, but one thing we should have as a reasonable argument that if I do something which takes away another person's food, makes another person starve, that's not a very good idea. Now if you eat meat, you take the food of practically nine people. So in a way, if there's anybody starving on the planet, those who do eat all this junk food, fast food, all this industry food, all this mass animal uh, uh, meat production, they're taking away the food of others because these people, or these, these brother animals, they get fed billions of tons of, of grains grown in, Af in South America, in other places. Billions of tons there. They eat so much just to make, plus with hormones and all this garbage, you know, just to make them fat and make money. Make money on your diseases. They are making money and you get sick and pay. So it's not a very nice proposal. So it's a time to, to think about it. So since Vandana Shiva who is a very great fighter for our environment, you could call her easily the Mahatma Gandhi of today. She's not that famous to many people, not informed on this level of environmental activism, but what she has done single-handedly it can really it, it's amazing. She's one of the strongest fighters against Monsanto GMOs and uh, she even kicked out Coca-Cola from South Inca. I mean, she is really a bold personality on the global scene and now she came out with this uh, talk she gave yesterday that we should not ignore the subject whatsoever. So I, I'm coming here, I don't know if I come here again, because you never know if you're going to live tomorrow. 
But I come here and I see a great potential in all of you. You have an amazing potential. You love nature. You are, you are uh, ready to do tapasya, what we call in India, make austerities, switching the comforts of Los Angeles with uh, the jungles of Bulgaria. Uh, things like that, no? Yeah, this is, this is very, very wonderful because last but not least we have to give the example. It's a question of, of making a nice example and, and the potential we have here and everywhere is, is the potential of a, uh, of a cell dividing. Actually, the efforts we have made in South America over the last 10 months has been that we don't need a, a banner. We don't need a leading organization. We need leading consciousness, conscious people. And that on every level. And they, just like cells, divide. And after they divide, they divide again, and they divide again, and they divide again. In the same way, if the cell of consciousness divides, it will reach everywhere, without internet, without newspapers, television, it will just reach there as cells divide and expand. So this was the whole idea. Because the reason of that was that it is simply so obvious that the entire system of communication is corrupted. The entire system of government and multinational uh, corporations is so corrupt. They're running the show and they want to make money with you, at your cost. And anyhow, everybody knows that. It's not really news. But are we ready to do something about it in a conscious manner? Are we ready to make a simple living high thinking? Are we ready to give an example of respecting our brother animals? Are we ready to, uh, to sacrifice comforts to preserve the earth? Like one person said, if you really think that uh, money is more important than ecology, then uh, please try to stop breathing while you count your money. How long you can go on with this? Um, so, our message of today, of coming here and meeting all of you, is only one simple one. Increase your love. Increase your love, increase your love, increase your love. Whatever that may mean for you, you have to translate it yourself. I can't really do that thinking for you. I mean, there's plenty of suggestions, but everybody has to do his own thinking there. I'll tell you a nice story. You will like that. Once there was a big samurai, real big, tall, and he had been fighting many battles. And when he was getting old, he saw, God, I fought so many battles, but I don't know any philosophy. I have no idea what the meaning of life is. I think I should find out. So he left his samurai group, and he went on a walk, and he met a teeny little monk. And the teeny little monk, he was looking at him, he says, Oh, you seem to be a wise man. Could you please tell me what is the difference between wisdom and ignorance the little monk looked up to the big samurai and said who do you think you are you think you want to understand anything with your big dull brain do you think as a big soldier you can understand what is wisdom what is ignorance the samurai got angry immediately and he pulled out his sword and the monk said that's it <laughs> Samurai put the sword back. Said, that's wisdom. <laughs> no, I cannot believe it. In one sentence you have given me such an enlightenment. I can like what can I do for you, you great saintly person? I'm so surprised. And the little monk said to Samurai, you know it's about time that you start thinking for yourself. <laughs> so, in a way, you know, we are supposed to be Brahmins, Shamans, fathers, teachers, brothers, whatever you want to call it. We are supposed to be guys who do some good here, right? At least I think you pride yourself of doing the same. I want to. 
Maybe you're not fully convinced whether you are, but this is a tradition of leaders, teachers, governors, or whoever you are, to do good to others. So unless they think for themselves and have their own conviction, unless they really come up with some positive, constructive contribution, there's no hope for the world anyway. Nobody's going to orchestrate and manipulate all the mafia and make them into little saints. Huh? <laughs> uh, that's not going to happen. Huh? As long as a person has a mafia men mentality, he will act as mafia man. And as long as you have an irresponsible consumer mentality, you will be an irresponsible consumer. So now the thing is to change it and to become a conscious consumer, to become a conscious human. And for that we have the World Conscious Pact. Conscientize yourself and act with love. And the invitation for that has come from Lord Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita, but this time it has come in particular from the natives of our brothers in the, in, in the, in the countries of North and South America. They have come together and they have made a call to the world called Ikvar Shenduna, which is uh, let's join hands all the guardians of Mother Nature and try to save life. That is the meaning, that's the translation of Ikvashanduna. So, so this is what we really have to consider very seriously because the invitation is heart to heart. You don't have to sign a paper, it's just if you accept it, you put it into practice. And then things will change immediately. From tomorrow or even today, things will change because if you become a unit of consciousness, you will be contagious. And this contagiousness will be the only thing. So, on the banner of our Ikvashanduna, we have that we are believing that the sincere consciousness of each and every one is the guiding principle. And of course, we accept the authorities. Now, well, who are the authorities? That's the big question. Oh, all the authorities. No? The authorities, the truth, the law, and love. They're the three authorities. You have to accept the truth because the truth is the truth, no matter what. The law is the law, no matter what, and love is love, no matter what. Only that sometimes you don't see the truth because you have no connection, you don't know the law, therefore you ignore it, and you are not very loving because you're sidetracked. You're uh, you have deviated from the real past towards some other influence. So, authorities are also those people who stand up for the truth, for the law, and for love. Whoever stands up for that, whoever is an example of truth, love, and, and, and law, yes, they are all parts of the authority. And you know one thing more? You should become an authority. It's about time. Because as long as you're not becoming part of the authority, you're becoming part of the disobedience sector of ignorance. And that doesn't befit you really. As a human, for, human being, to know the truth about the proper conduct is basically what the scriptures of India have called Atatu Brahma Vidyasa. This human form of life is meant to inquire about the highest truth. This human form of life is meant to make you happy by connecting with the highest truths. Now what about this, my dear? Oh, something here in Pavel Pavel Banya. Hmm? Yes, Pavel Banya. If we can do something here and we can encourage each other, help each other in this connection of making more things and making more people aware about this divine love, 
then I would be very, very, very happy. If we can help you in one way or another, also very, very happy. Um, our main work usually is as a, as a pilgrim, just traveling around, but here and there we gain some experience which we love to share. And I see that you're taking care of your ecological gardens, very nice, very beautiful, so it's a very good example. And volunteers can come here and learn more and then uh, get, gain some insight into the secrets of the soul and animals. They have souls. They are souls. They are brothers. That's all I really wanted to say. I don't know what's... Uh, there was a presentation of our architect. How was that? Yes. yes. Was there? Is there? Shall there be? No, yes. Uh, mm.